Finally, AMD announced an RX 9070 XT and RX 9070 RDNA Force based graphics cards, both of them with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, along with FSR4. They're coming on March 6th, we've got the details. Welcome back to PC Builder, I'm Jason. This has gotta be the most teased GPU launch like ever. We're just gonna jump straight into the good stuff, the performance, then we'll get to the rest of the details. AMD claims the 9070 XT is 38% faster than the RX 7900 GRE in mixed rasterization and ray tracing at 1440p, and 42% faster than the RX 7900 GRE at 4K. Now I've done the math on their slides and AMD's claims amount to the 9070 XT being 33% faster in rasterization than the 7900 GRE at 1440p with a larger 37% increase at 4K resolution. Meanwhile, AMD claims a 50% ray tracing uplift for the RX 9070 XT over the 7900 GRE at 1440p and an even larger 53% ray tracing uplift at 4K resolution. As always, these are first party benchmarks, so take it with a huge grain of salt. There will of course be third party benchmarks coming before the GPU launches on March 6. Meanwhile, AMD claims the RX 9070 non-XT model is 20% faster in mixed rasterization and ray tracing than the RX 7900 GRE at 1440p and 21% faster than the 7900 GRE at 4K resolution. Again, I've done the math here, so you don't have to. AMD's rasterization uplift claims amount to the RX 9070 being 17% faster than the 7900 GRE at 1440p and a larger 19% faster at 4K resolution. On the ray tracing side, AMD claims the 9070 is 26% faster than the 7900 GRE at both 1440p and 4K resolutions. Let's take a look at where the claim performance would put the RX 9070 XT and RX 9070 compared to the RTX 50 and 40 series and RX 7000 series GPUs. Now starting at 1440p, of course, if you watch our monthly best graphics card to buy series, you're gonna recognize this chart, but I do want to know it now includes data from the RTX 5070 Ti reviews. And of course, if you haven't seen our February best GPU to buy video, data on this chart is compiled from RTX 50 series reviews from TechSpot and Tech Power Up with an estimate for the RTX 5070 based on Nvidia's claims, of course, adjusted to actual uplift on other RTX 50 series GPUs that we've seen so far. Now this is all rasterization data due to how inconsistent ray tracing tests are and we're using the rasterization uplift for the 9070 XT and 9070 that I just parsed out. Now, since we're just applying a multiplier from AMD to the RX 7900 GRE data, I do need to point out that in recent benchmarks to 7900 GRE, it's coming slower than it did in the past, where it typically beat or tied the 4070 Super. This could be a number of things, it could be updates to the games that have been tested by the developers, it could be different games added or removed from the benchmark suite, so on and so forth. So consider these projections the baseline, they could be a bit higher. Again, we will get third-party benchmarks soon. For the 9070 XT at 1440p, AMD's claims have it edging out the 5070 Ti slightly, coming in just below the RX 7900 XTX and RTX 4080 Super. If the 7900 GRE was equal to the 4070 Super in this chart, the 9070 XT would be solidly above both the 4080 Super and the 7900 XTX and nipping at the heels of the RTX 5080. So that's basically the range based on AMD's claims. For the RX 9070, it basically comes in right at the 7900 XT and RTX 4070 Ti Super level. Though again, could be a bit higher if we're undervaluing this 7900 GRE here and it could therefore be much closer to the 5070 Ti. Switching over to 4K, remember the RTX 50 series do much better at this resolution than 1440p. I've said in the past, I think this is because the really only significant change from the 40 series was the addition of GDDR7 memory, where that higher bandwidth does help out more at this higher resolution. And here we see the 9070XT and the RTX 5070Ti roughly tied, possibly a small lead for the RTX 5070Ti. Again, 9070XT could be a bit higher if we're undervaluing the 7900GRE. The 9070 again slots in right around the 7900XT and RTX 4070Ti Super, and I'm expecting the 9070 non-XT to be about 15% faster than the RTX 5070. I'm just expecting 4070 Super levels of performance from that, but reviews of that card are also coming on March 5th. So far, if you're wondering how accurate I feel about this data, my 50 series projections have proven pretty accurate. For ray tracing, AMD is claiming a massive performance uplift that could put the 9070 XT around the RTX 4070 Ti Super in ray tracing performance and the 9070 non-XT around the RTX 4070 Super in ray tracing. 
AMD says it has essentially redesigned its entire ray tracing engine, and we've already gotten kind of a sneak peek at this with the PS5 Pro launch, although that was just a hybrid of RDNA 2, RDNA 3, and RDNA 4 features, while the RX 9000 series is full RDNA 4, and it goes much further. In terms of average uplift, it's really tough to compare an average for ray tracing, given how inconsistently ray tracing effects are applied and, and even tested in games. Hardware Unboxed recently did a massive survey of all the ray tracing games out there and found that there were really only a handful of games where they felt turning on ray tracing was actually transformative to the gameplay. So my advice, if one of those games is important to you, just wait for actual head-to-head -head benchmarks rather than trying to rely on some generalized percent uplift. All right, let's jump through the rest of the specs, starting with Total Board Power TBP. The 9070XT base spec is rated at 304 watts, with the 9070 itself at just 220 watts. By comparison, the 9070XT is about 50 watts lower than the 7900XTX for what looks like similar rasterization performance, and the 9070 is a whopping 100 watts less than the 7900XT, so pretty significant power savings there. This puts the 9070 XT on par with the 300 watt 5070 Ti for likely similar performance, and it makes the 9070 12% more efficient than the upcoming 250 watt RTX 5070 for likely better performance. There will not be any reference models as with previous generations. All the models this generation will be partner cards. Some of those cards will of course be overclocked models with higher board power. Both GPUs will come with 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM. Both are gonna be PCIe 5.0 and use the full 16 pin GPU connector and both will be DisplayPort 2.1a. Of course, we also have FSR 4 coming which is launching with the 9070 graphics cards. Now I got a chance to play around with the FSR 4 beta at CES in January, it was quite impressive versus FSR 3.1. AMD, it's basically moving from a software upscaler to a machine learning hardware-based upscaler, similar to how DLSS works. This means the FSR 4 is gonna require an RX 9000 series graphics card, which has additional hardware over previous generations. Now, AMD's claiming that even at the performance level, which is the lowest quality setting and gives the biggest FPS boost, the image quality can be at times better than native at 4K, and they showed off a static image from Warhammer 40K Space Marine 2, where even the natively rendered 4K image has a hard time resolving the thin spires on top of the towers, then FSR 3.1 makes them a bit worse, but FSR 4 is actually able to render the spires in a quality above the native 4K image, including improving image sharpness and clarity. And again, this is performance mode, the lowest quality setting, and there are three higher quality modes to use. This is very impressive, on par with what we've seen from DLSS 4, but as everything else in this presentation, this is AMD's first party data and AMD's examples, we'll certainly see FSR 4 tested in the coming weeks independently. Now, in addition to the image quality upgrades, AMD claims FSR 4 is bringing even lower latency with their latest version of anti-lag, and because FSR 4 is based on an upgraded FSR 3.1 API, any FSR 3.1 game can be made FSR 4 ready. AMD claims that 30 titles will be supported at launch with plans for at least 75 games total by the end of 2025, possibly more. AMD also announced upgrades to the RX 9000 series GPU encoder for video capture using H.264. While this is nice, AMD already has great encoding using H.265, also known as HEVC, which is a better codec anyway for image quality and compression. If you wanna know how good it is on the 7000 series, you can look at this or any other video we've done since August, 2023, all of our videos are encoded in H.265 HEVC using an RX 7900 XT GPU on the OBS software suite, but it's nice for them to clean up H.264 for those that want to use it. Of course, all of the RX 9000 series GPUs will support AV1 encoding as well. Finally, AMD did show off their latest version of frame generation, what they call fluid motion frames. AMD's claiming a more significant smoothest uplift. I do appreciate that unlike NVIDIA, they aren't claiming that this makes the RX 9070 and RTX 5090. RTX 5070, 4090 performance. In previous testing, AMD's fluid motion frames has generally been a little bit better than NVIDIA's single frame generation. But remember, fake frames do not give you the benefit of the responsiveness that real FPS does with its decreased latency. And frame smoothing technologies, AKA fake frames, also introduce ghosting, weird artifacts, stuttering-like behavior, and other anomalies that sacrifice visual quality. We've certainly seen this in multi-frame generation from NVIDIA's new GPUs. 
That leads us to pricing and availability. Now, AMD initially decided not to give us the price. They didn't give any of the media the price. However, they just held seconds ago a launch event in China before the US event. And in fact, the price of the RX 9070 XT is 599 there, and the RX 9070 is gonna be 549. That's not including tax, and that's converted from the Chinese currency. I was expecting 649 and 549, 649 for the RX 9070 XT and 549 for the 9070. So what do I think about this in terms of value? Well, first of all, let's talk about the NVIDIA competition. What competition? You can't buy an NVIDIA GPU right now. Frankly, if you could get 7900 XTX levels of performance. It was a, you know, a, mostly a $900 graphics card for quite a while, but you could pick it up for about $800 in the fall, but you can get that now for $600, but it includes much better ray tracing and it includes FSR4 with much better upscaling. I mean, I think that's a pretty big win. That is a pretty big win. The other thing I will say about AMD GPUs is AMD tends to react better price-wise than NVIDIA does. NVIDIA tends to keep their prices high no matter what, and when the sales come around, they do not give almost an inch on those sales, whereas AMD often has steep discounts throughout the year. So I gotta say the 9070 XT looks pretty good, if if that's true. Even at 649, I was prepared to give it a, you know, one thumb up, not two thumbs up, but one thumb up. On the 9070, I, if, if there really is only a $50 difference, I just kind of scratch my head like, why would anybody buy the 9070? It just doesn't make any sense. If you're gonna spend $550 for a GPU, why wouldn't you just spend $50 more, 10% more for way better performance? I just don't get it. I can't imagine that they're, if, that they're going to sell GPUs, the 9070 GPU at that price. They did the same thing with the 7700 XT. Initially, it was only $50 difference from the 7800 XT, and it was a terrible value. However, later in its life, it became a great value when it was $349, not $449, and it came with some free games as well. In terms of its NVIDIA competition, RTX 5070 Ti, you can't get one for less than 900 bucks, and you can't even get one for that right now. And then of course, we've got the RTX 5070. I'm hearing the launch volume on that is absolute total garbage, total garbage. Maybe you'll get lucky and get one, but I do expect just like with all the other NVIDIA cards that the prices are gonna be massively marked up. So that's what I think about it. I think it's a pretty big win from AMD. If in fact this pricing holds, I will leave the pricing link down in the video description if it's different than that. But right now expecting 599 for the 9070 XT and 549 for the 9070. Again, not the greatest on that one, but the 9070 XT looking good. If you got value out of this video, please give it a like. It makes a huge difference to the channel. And of course, subscribe for more cool PC content. Like, did you check out our recent look at the GPU market? We do this every month. We looked at it just a couple weeks ago. It's terrible, but you should really have all the knowledge before you go out shopping for a GPU. Check it out and we'll catch you on the next one.